let me tell you a little about the Ramchal, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato. <laughs> Rabbi Moshe Chaim Lutzato was Niftar. He passed away in the Hebrew calendar year 506, Tav Kuvav. Now, this is very fascinating because there is a letter from the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidut, in that year, where he writes that he had a dream, that he went up, ascended into the heavenly realms, and he saw such great rejoicing and happiness that he never knew from such happiness his whole life. He says even now he doesn't know of such happiness, which is a very big statement from the Baal Shem Tov, whose whole <laughs> the whole Hasidus is based on happiness. And he writes in this letter that he asked in the heavens, he suspected that perhaps the great happiness is because they are expecting his arrival, that maybe his time has come to pass away and join them up in the heavens. And he asked him if that was the case, is that why there is so much rejoicing? And they said no. And they left him without knowledge of what the great happiness was. But from his havamina, from his assumption that maybe it was his death, we could discern from there that maybe it was the death, the passing of the Ramchal that was in that year, Tav Kuvav, that there was such great rejoicing that even the Baal Shem Tov said he had no conception of what this joy was about that the whole heaven was rejoicing and everyone was going from higher, was descending higher and higher. <laughs> that was the Ramchal's passing in that year. In any event, let's continue the Ramchal. Maybe his first book was a book on diktuk, on grammar, which is a very funny thing to point out because the Ramchal's main rabbi was the great Talmudist was one of the greatest leaders of the generation in the study of Talmud and his Rebbe's Rebbe his, the, the master of the generation that he also studied from who was the ultimate leader of the generation the Maalbach <laughs> was a great Kabbalist primarily in those generations, they weren't. Uh, they were. They were. They knew everything, <laughs> but primarily he was a kabbalist, and the Ramchal found already a niche to write a book about diktuk grammar. But later on, that was that was when the Ramchal was still uh, just a regular scholar. At 14, he already learned and studied all the books of the library and he, he devoured them. He, he, was, he gained the complete encyclopedic knowledge of all of the Talmud. It's not like reading science books. These are books that entail active intellect to understand. The, and uh, he moved on, but he still did not have any divine revelations of any sort. And... When he did, and he started writing and revealing the greatest secrets ever revealed. <laughs> he stayed almost clear of this whole grammar and all the particulars. Once in a while, you see him making uh, such distinctions. But often you'll find the Ramchal basing himself just on the question, the general question, what's going on here? It can't be so simple. Without, he for sure had the skills of dissecting and showing grammatical nuances that would point, and, but he steered clear from that. He was following the ways of the Zohar, which, which condemn this particularization, the, looking for such details. The details have to come from love, but not from uh, harking and nitpicking and getting very particular. This the Zohar 
It's very against. And Rabbeinu, Rabbi Nachman, Anach Nachman, Nachman, Yuman, forbade us from taking on stringencies and from delving into grammar and these uh, these things. Rabbi Nachman said of himself, he himself has absolutely no stringencies, not even on Passover. So it's amazing that the Ramchal started his first book on grammar and that was before he gained divine inspiration when he kind of left that all behind him and he writes extensively about the greatness of knowing the, the generalizations, the klalim, the principles. And he omits that the Zohar continues, when the Zohar talks about the, the principles and continues to say that it's important <laughs> it's not just the principles you have to also get to know all the details but the Ramchal really concentrates on the principles in any event in the year in the Hebrew calendar year of Taf Pei Zion the 5,487 the Ramchal gained uh, divine inspiration from divine messengers he began to get the, the revelations now this year uh, the numerical value of 5,000 which 487 the, fi- the 5,000 is just has a, has a numerical value of 5 that's how it works in gematrias in 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 numerical values and it comes out to the numerical value of 492 which is 491 plus the inclusive 491 is the numerical value of Namach Nachma Nachma Meumen pretty amazing huh that is when the Ramchal began to get his divine revelations and his main book, in my humble opinion, the most amazing book he wrote in the year Nanach Nachman Nachman Miman 5491. In the year, in the Hebrew year 491 of this millennium, he wrote the book Adir Bamorom Hashem, the mighty one in heavens. <laughs> the first the acronym of these of Adi Bamor Hashem is the same acronym as Yisrael Bero Deser who, who received the petek that was signed Nanach Nach Manach Miman. also in that year 491 the Ramchal wrote a prayer to be said on the graves of Sadiqim on Erev Rosh Hashanah before the New Year's <laughs> on the graves of Sadiqim, which is one of the most intrinsic, critical points of Breslov that Rabbi Nachman left us over to be by the Sadiqim, particularly him, the head of all the Sadiqim on Erev Rosh Hashanah, and here the Ramchal in the year 491, Nanach Nachman Nachman Yuman, gave us a prayer to say. Amazing. But even more amazing than all of this <laughs> is that the Ramchal was living in Italy in a town called Padua, which has a numerical value of Uman. <laughs> and in the year 491, possibly four years later, which is okay still with the numerical values, but I saw it specifically it says 491. I just have to check it to make sure if it's for sure. He moved, he had to move. One sec, I have to continue this video on the next shot. Stay in tune for this amazing Nanach. 